John Watts here from the True Golf Academy. Today I'm just looking at Tony Finau's golf swing and importantly how he generates so much speed, so much power. We haven't got a perfect angle on the downline camera and this is with a fairway wood but for what I'm going to be demonstrating today looking at the three biggest ways Tony develops speed it's absolutely fine it will be fit for purpose. This camera angle from behind is a really interesting one. It's a great way to look at your golf swing and look at how you're using the ground, how you're moving your pelvis, how you're shifting your pressure. Um, if you haven't then got a force platform. So number one power source for Tony. I mean everybody talks about him being a powerful guy from a short swing. You'll actually see as he gets to the top it's not that short a golf swing, right? He he does a lot of things very well at setup, very, very neutral, top of his golf swing. There's not a lot to worry about here. If anything, from the top of the back swing, his lead wrist is a little bit cupped, so in a little bit of extension, which the average on the PGA Tour is a little bit that way, but you'll see as he shallows his downswing, starts his downswing, the club drops more behind him, and the lead wrist actually moves a little bit more into flexion. That is the sensation of almost the knuckles staying behind the wrist to help close that club face in the downswing because it's open in the backswing, it's got to close in the downswing. So he does that brilliantly as he shallows the club with his wrist. But what I want to focus on is power sources. So number one power source is going to be the lateral movement of Tony's hips. So the red line I drew, in fact, let me just go back to the start and draw a line that's representing bang on his left hip. Not a circle, here we go, a line. So what Tony does great is as he starts his downswing, he starts it with his lead knee moving towards the target and starting to rotate. His pressure is moving down into his lead side and you'll see his lead hip actually moves quite a long way forwards if I go all the way into impact. What we see with the majority of elite golfers is they will move the center of their pelvis, which we're not really seeing from here, that would be the belt buckle, belly button, will move forwards by around four to six inches from its address position to its impact position. Um, so we are seeing, that's with driver. We'll see a little less than that with an iron, but definitely the pelvis is moving forwards. A lot of golfers are worried about sliding. Now, because Tony's hitting a driver here, you'll see his head will stay actually move backwards. With an iron, it would stay in that circle. With a driver, if anything, it's moving back. So his hips are moving forwards, but his head is staying where it was or actually moving, if anything, backwards. And that's really going to help his launch conditions. But number one power source, he's using some lateral forces with hips going forwards. Number two, he's using some great rotational forces. So as he drives that pressure into that lead side, you will start to see his body unwinding. And here he gets his pelvis definitely more open than anything else. I would guess here that his pelvis is open by at least 30 to 40 degrees. Then he's getting his torso a little open, nowhere near as much as the hips, but maybe 10 to 15. His shoulders would appear to be pretty square, pretty neutral but his torso, if we're down line, would be slightly open. His hips are very open. So that's a big rotational force. And lastly, in terms of using the ground, those forces would be his, in fact, get rid of those lines. If I come down to just pre-impact, the vertical force. So I'm going to stop around here with Tony. Now if I drew a line representing where his belt is there, what you'll see into impact is that belt go up and up and up and his pelvis is actually risen. The handle is risen as well. Big power source using those vertical forces pushing off the ground. Now as Tony's hip is, leg is extending, that helps him get more open, so his left leg is straightening, it helps his body get open, but it also helps the handle start to move upwards. Again, another power source. As the hands move up, the clubhead will accelerate to try and catch up with the hands. Again, huge power source. Lastly, very last little look at where Tony generates power from, that right elbow movement. So his right elbow is way lower than his lead arm in the downswing. That helps him shallow the golf club, helps get his right elbows flexed and in front of his hip. The amount of lag he creates here is huge. 
with that elbow position, just like you're skimming a stone, throwing a rock. Trail elbow is flexed and in front of his hip, and it's extending, but it's extending through the golf ball here, just like it would do if you're gonna throw a ball a long way. So a lot of people falsely have this trail elbow movement, staying lower than the lead arm. They do it by losing posture. You can see that Tony manages to maintain his spine angle, even though he's getting that trail arm clearly lower than the lead arm. It's a great way to shallow the club and maintain some lag, and then extending that trail arm at the right point. So he uses the ground very, very well with lateral, vertical, and rotational forces, and then he does a great effort with this trail arm movement. 